Welcome to ECA Limu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the introduction to physics, we discussed a branch of physics called thermodynamics. And we said thermodynamics is the study of heat and how heat can be transformed from one form to another. So entirely in this uh, topic and in this lesson, we will be discussing how heat can be transferred from one point to another. So in this case, this way we are going to answer questions why metals conduct heat very fast, but wood and plastic does not conduct heat. Here is where we are going to discuss why some cooking utensils are made of plastic handles or even uh, wood handles. And then here we are going to discuss the working of a thermos flask the engine cooling system, and many, many other applications which involves heat. My name is Albert, and in this lesson, we are going to discuss the introduction to heat transfer. So by the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define heat, then differentiate between heat and temperature, and then state the modes of heat transfer as convection, radiation, and conduction. And then finally, explain the mechanism of heat transfer by conduction. So what is heat? Heat is defined as a form of energy which flows from a point of higher temperature to a point of lower temperature. So for you to have heat flowing, let's say you have body one and you have another body here, two, then this one, let's say it has 100 degrees Celsius, this one has 20 degrees Celsius, then these two bodies are in contact. If they are in contact, now heat will move from where we have high temperature to a point where we have low temperature. So this is the direction of heat flow. Now, the body which has a lot of temperature, its temperature will be decreasing, or the body with high amount of heat, the temperature will be decreasing and as, it, heat, as heat is moving towards the body with low temperature. And then the temperature of the body which had the low temperature, as it is gaining new heat or new temperature, it will the temperature will increase. Now, a point will be reached where the first body and the second body now we'll attain uh, the same amount of temperature or amount of heat at the same point. So here, if this one transfer, let's say uh, 40 degrees Celsius, if it transfer 40 degrees Celsius, the second body will gain the 40 to become 60. So the first one will remain with 60 degrees Celsius. And then the second body now will have uh, 60 degrees Celsius. So at this point, the net heat is zero. Net heat is zero, it means there is no body which has high temperature or high heat, and then there's no one, there's no body which has lower heat. So at that point, there's no heat flow. Heat will stop flowing because it does not have what we call the flow or the temperature gradient. The SI unit of heat is Joule, which is written or which is given as a symbol as the capital J. And then it's a derived quantity. Derived quantities means these are the quantities that can only be obtained through multiplication or division of other physical quantities. So how is heat related to temperature? Heat is a form of energy which flows due to temperature difference. But temperature is a degree of hotness or coldness of a body in a chosen scale. So that's the first difference from the definition of the two. Then heat, the flow of heat cannot be measured precisely. We don't have any instrument which can measure the flow of heat, but the temperature can be accurately be measured using a thermometer. Remember what we discussed in the previous topic. Then the SI unit of heat is Joule and then the SI unit of temperature or thermodynamic temperature is Kelvin. 
So how does heat travel? We are going to realize that heat transfer takes place using the three modes of heat transfer. And the first one is conduction. Conduction takes place both in solids, liquids, and gases. Then the second one is convection, only takes place in fluids. So this one is in the, the, the three states of matter. That is solids, liquids, and gases. Then this one is only for fluids. And then radiation uh, can take place even without a medium. Can take place without a medium. So it does not depend on matter for it to travel or for it to travel. So we are going to begin with the first mode of heat transfer, that is conduction. And the conduction is the transfer of heat within an object without the movement of the object as a whole. So in this case, if you have an object like this one here, you have an object, and then you introduce some heat at one point here, the heat is going to travel through this material to the other end without the movement of this material. The material will be at the same point or at the same position, but the heat energy will be traveling inside this material without the material moving. So that's what we call conduction. So we have mechanisms of heat conduction, and these mechanisms are the ones which are going to determine uh, good conductors and poor conductors. So for a material to be a good conductor, it must have or must possess the two mechanisms of heat transfer. But if a material only have one mechanism of heat conduction, then it's going to be a poor conductor of heat. So the first mode or mechanism of heat conduction is vibration of atoms. Remember, when we discussed particular nature of matter, we said uh, a good example in this case is a solid. The solids, which we are going to realize they are good conductors of heat, the particles are in fixed position. The particles are in fixed position, and these particles are close to each other and in contact with each other, like that. So if this is our solid, the particles are in contact with each other, like that. Then now, when you introduce heat at one end here, when you introduce heat to this one end here, then this heat is going to increase the temperature of these uh, particles at this end. When the temperature of these particles increases, remember from particular nature of matter, we said the kinetic energy will increase. Kinetic energy increases. When the kinetic energy increases, these particles will start vibrating more randomly. Now, when they vibrate, they will cause the neighbors to start vibrating. And when the neighbors start vibrating, they will make their neighbor to get to or to vibrate. And then the neighbor will make the neighbor vibrate. In the process, the neighbor will make the neighbor to vibrate or through the conductor. So in the process, as the neighbor is vibrating, then the heat will be transferred or will be transferred from one end to the other end. So in that case, for you to make heat to be conducted, you vibrate particles at one point using heat. The temperature of that point will increase. It will make the particles to gain more kinetic energy. They will vibrate the neighbor. The neighbors will vibrate each other and then the heat will be conducted from one point of the conductor to the other end. Then we have another uh, mechanism of heat transfer that we call uh, free electrons. Free electrons is possessed by uh, metals. Metals have free electrons. If you have a metal like this one here, on the outermost energy level, of a metal or of a, a atoms of a metal, we have electrons. We have electrons like this one here. And these electrons are always in motion. These electrons are always in motion. So if you introduce 
heat at one point here. This is our heat. These electrons are going to gain the kinetic or the, the, the temperature. When temperature increases, these electrons now will move because they are always in motion. They will move through this conductor and in that way they will conduct a uh, heat from one point to another. So these two mechanisms, if a body possesses both vibration of atoms and uh, movement of electrons, that material will be a perfect good conductor. But if it possesses only vibration and does not have free electrons, it will be a poor conductor of heat. So that will mark the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss more on heat transfer.